So general exclusions, you have ordinance or law, movement, earth movement, neglect, war, nuclear hazard, and intentional loss. These exclusions mean that if there was a there was damage due to a covered peril, but it was because essentially because of war or neglect, then it wouldn't be covered. If it was because of earth movement, you know, usually an earthquake, it's not going to be covered. Nuclear hazards cause damage w would not be covered. And if it was intentional, you weren't taking care of the property and there was an intentional loss, it would not be covered. Okay, so these are your basic general exclusions on all your dwelling policy forms. Um, then you have your all risk exclusions. All risk exclusions means that everything that's covered in an open peril policy will have these exclusions. So everything's covered on an open peril policy except wear and tear, deterioration, rust, mold, rot, and contamination. Those would not be covered. Inherent vice, which is a characteristic of a given piece of property that causes it to depreciate or spoil or break um, or disintegrate. So it would be inherent vice and latent defects, defective things. Um, smoke from agricultural smudging or industrial operations. So if you have smoke damage but you live next to the refinery, then smoke damage because of that is not covered. Smog damage is not covered. Mechanical breakdown is not cover it, covered. Settling, shrinking, or expansion of the foundation would not be covered. If there was damage because the foundation wasn't done right, it would not cover, it would not be covered under your home policy, your dwelling policy. And then damage done by rodents, by vermin or insects, and domestic animals would not um, be covered. So that's a good to know. So it, if it's a wild animal, that means it would be covered. But domestic animals, it wouldn't be covered. And then rodents and insects and vermin are all excluded. So basically, on an all-risk policy, such as a DP3, where all risks are covered under coverages A and B, everything's covered except your all-risk exclusions. And these are them. So next we're going to go over additional coverages. So you have additional coverages that are covered in addition to, you know, what's actually covered. So these are not coverages that you're going to see in any particular insuring agreement. This is just coverages that are also going to be covered under the policy. So for a DP1, your basic policy, um, there are additional coverages in here of debris removal and fire department service charges. So debris removal is going to happen when um, there's damage to the dwelling and um, before they start fixing it, they have to remove the debris. So that's an additional coverage. Um, you don't have to pay extra for it. It's a, it's covered. Um, it's additional coverage. It's not apparel covered in the policy, but it's covered in addition um, to what's covered under the basic form. Fire department service charges. Some areas will charge um, when you call a fire department, they'll charge you for it. And so in the DP1 basic form, fire department service charges are going to be covered under the insurance policy. Those two things are going to be covered in DP2 and DP3, but there are additional coverages that are going to be covered in DP2 and DP3 that are not covered in DP1. Um, you have ordinance or law. So we talked about this, we talked about this as an exclusion before. Ordinance or law is an exclusion. If you had to um, make changes to your home uh, because the government or the state or the county, you know, put in an ordinance or you weren't abiding by something, um, 
there would be coverage of 10% of coverage A under a DP2 and DP3. Although it's excluded, you still will get 10% covered. Um, improvements or alterations. Um, sometimes when there is a covered loss and you want to build back what you had, you will also be able to make some improvements to avoid from another covered loss occurring. So improvements or alterations are additional coverages in a DP2 and 3. And then, of course, you have your fire department service charges, and then trees, shrubs, and plants. So a lot of times in a fire, there's going to be damage to trees, shrubs, and plants, and those typically are not covered under a DP1, but they will be recovered and covered under a DP2 and DP3. So those are your additional coverages. This pretty much covers the basics of a dwelling policy. I do want you to just know that the specific perils that are covered are very important to go over. Um, remember the acronyms so that you can remember the perils that are covered. Remember what they pay out as far as replacement costs and actual cash value. And that will help you understand the dwelling policy. Remember that a DP1 is not as good as a DP2. And then a DP3 is better than a DP1 and a DP2. So those are some important things to remember when you're studying the dwelling policy. I hope this helps you understand the dwelling policy.